Um, so my second batch came, so, and they returned, you know, I got like, a, like a free, <laughs> I got them back. Well, now I have, tw I, I started out only having 15, but now I have 20. <laughs> I lived and they sent me 15 more. So oh my goodness. That's I have 20 great. and half of them are boys, which is going to be really challenging. <laughs> so uh, when I make it back to Connecticut, which could be sooner, hopefully, rather than later, I will bring my two and a half year old grandson over if that's oh, all absolutely. right to see your parents. Absolutely. They're really fun. They're really, I really love fun. that. They, they, they are so fun. I'm going to take advantage of the ability to mute all of us momentarily uh, since we've arrived at 10 o'clock and invite Barbara to lead us into our worship service with this morning's prelude. Thank you, Barbara, and welcome, friends of the Congregational Church of Salisbury, United Church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome. Welcome if you are old or young or a little bit of each, believing or doubting or a little bit of each, LGBTQIAP or straight, hungry or full, hurting or hoping, Welcome to worshipers of all colors, all genders, all relationship statuses, all states of mind, all shapes and sizes. Because you are here, the Congregational Church of Salisbury, this body of Christ, is whole and perfect. Welcome. We begin always with announcements of interest and concern to our church community, and I'll give a reminder that uh, our church council is meeting today at 1115. Um, that should give us a little pause after the worship service concludes so we can take a stretch break or uh, get a cup of tea or coffee. Um, are there other announcements to share? Um, you can unmute yourself or put it into the chat if anyone has announcements for us. Well, let me ask if there are particular joys or concerns that we can share today. Um, I know the Eisler family has been preparing for the arrival of a baby, a home birth, and that was to happen this past week. And uh, I haven't heard direct news, but I pray that all is well and that life is abounding in that household with uh, Jess mom and Michael father and of the newborn to come. John, could I ask yeah. a prayer for people who 
whose jobs are not secure and who who might be fearful about how they can move into the new whatever this new normal is going to be. Indeed, thank you, Betsy. And in a similar vein, I'd like to offer a prayer for the millions of volunteers who are working through uh, a, a hundreds of organizations, uh, including Surge, Stand Up for Racial Justice, which my daughters are involved in. Uh, the, it's so hopeful to see so many people at so many ages stepping up and not just demonstrating, but committing to change. So I think this, let's pray that this is a true transformational point, not just mm. a burst of rioting. Yes, thank you, Lorna. And we do pray for George Floyd, for Breonna Taylor, for Ahmaud Arbery. We pray that they rest in power. For those who are grieving their deaths, we pray that God's spirit will give endurance in mourning. For those who are crying out and marching against the white supremacist violence that killed them and uncounted other black and brown people, we pray that the voices of dignity and peace stay strong and their feet resolute until we as a people overcome our racism. And we always hold in prayer all of us in our church community, um, bound together by uh, our common faith and shared history and our commitment to be a church of uh, people who follow Jesus way of Shalom. We've also been praying uh, every morning, every week for congregation members or relatives who are working in healthcare, in particular naming those we know, whose names we know, healthcare workers, Jean, Katie, Laurel, Claire, Helen, Deborah, Vicki, Kathleen, Stephanie, Karen, Bianca, Anne, Robin, Catherine. We pray that their necessary work as they deliver God's healing power, um, uh, we pray with gratitude for that and that the spirit will keep them strong. Let's hold all of these joys and concerns in our hearts as we take a moment for silent prayer. All these things we ask in the name of Christ Jesus, our ruler, our brother, our savior, our guide, our friend. Amen. And now, Kathy, if you'd please unmute yourself and lead us in the call to worship. We lift our voices in praise with the voice of light shimmering in star skies and moonrise, flooding bright with the sun. We give thanks to God, mystery, teacher, and revealer. We lift our voices in praise of the waters, tumbling free, running deep, bringing life, moving on. We give thanks to God, source, life, and power. We lift our voices in praise with the voice of living things, bird and whale songs, plants stretching, microbes churning the earth, creatures of day and of night, humanity in the manifold tongue and hue. We give thanks to God, creator, love and breath. i
I can't work off, so I can't see. Well, he can't see us either. I know, because we're down the top. Please pray with me. Holy God, like creation on that first morning, may we tingle with anticipation of your goodness and wonder flowing into our lives. God who shapes all things, may we join all creation in worshiping you, who is as close as our heartbeat. We remember, God, as your mind overflowed with dreams, you brooded over the waters, spread the clouds with your wind, breathed life into all that is. Spirit of fanciful faith, planting the seeds of Shalom. May we join all creation in dancing with you, who is as close to us as every breath we take. Amen. And we'll return to sing the sixth verse of God of the Sparrow. Our responsive reading is Psalm 8. You reign in the glory over the heavens. So that even out of the mouths of babes and infants, Words flow to silence the forces of turmoil and terror. I'll go ahead until we have the screen up. Thank you. When I look at your heavens, okay, let's begin from the top this time. You reign in glory over the heavens, so that even out of the mouths of babes and infants, words flow to silence the forces of turmoil and terror. When I look at your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have crafted, I wonder, what are human beings that you are mindful of them, mortals that you care for them? You have made them but a little less than divine and crowned them with glory and honor. You have entrusted them with the works of your hands. You have put all things into their care, all the sheep and oxen and also the beasts of the field, the birds of the air and the fish of the sea whatever passes along the paths of the sea. O oh God, our so sovereign, how majestic is your stature in all the earth. And now the words of Wendell Berry, farmer poet, the peace of wild things. When despair for the world grows in me and I wake in the night at the least sound in fear of what my life and my children's lives may be, I go and lie down where the wood drake rests in his beauty on the water and the great heron feeds. I come into the peace of wild things who do not tax their lives with forethought of grief. I come into the presence of still water I feel above me the day blind stars waiting with their light. For a time I rest in the grace of the world and am free.
The scripture assigned to this Sunday, the week after Pentecost, includes one of the creation stories from Genesis and the great commissioning of the disciples from the Gospel of Matthew. I've taken the liberty of selecting a few verses from the Genesis reading, knowing that this reading comes to us in a tumultuous time when our society is shaken by public health and moral crises and out of a conviction that going to the beginning of our shared story can give us a necessary reminder of God's intention for us and God's power in us. So I invite you to hear uh, Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 through 5 and 24 to 31 from the translation by Everett Fox in the Shokan Bible. Listen now for the word of God. At the beginning of God's creating of the heavens and the earth, when the earth was wild and waste, darkness over the face of ocean, rushing spirit of God hovering over the face of the waters, God said, let there be light. And there was light. God saw the light, that it was good. God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness God called night. There was setting, there was dawning, one day. God said, let the earth bring forth living beings after their kind, herd animals, crawling things, and the wildlife of the earth after their kind. It was so. God made the wildlife of the earth after their kind and the herd animals after their kind and all crawling things of the soil after their kind. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the heavens, animals, all the earth and all crawling things that crawl upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God did God create it. Male and female, God created them. God blessed them. God said to them, bear fruit and be many and fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the heavens, and all living things that crawl about upon the earth. God said, here, I give you all plants that bear seeds that are upon the face of all the earth and all trees in which there is tree fruit that bears seeds for you shall they be for eating and also for all the living things of the earth, for all the fowl of the heavens, for all that crawls about upon the earth in which there is living being all green plants for eating. It was so. Now God saw all that God had made, and here it was exceedingly good. There was setting, there was dawning, the sixth day. This ends our reading from the book of Genesis. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Let us pray. Gracious God, oil the hinges of our heart's doors that they may swing open widely and freely at your coming. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Sometimes the most telling clues are the ones that are missing. In a Sherlock Holmes story, the consulting detective has a conversation with Detective Gregory of Scotland Yard. Gregory says, is there any other point to which you would wish to draw my attention? Holmes, to the curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. Gregory, the dog did nothing in the nighttime. Holmes, that was the curious incident. A curious absence can tell a crucial part of the story. In the first chapter of the Bible, on the fifth day of creation, God had made all the creatures that fly in the air and swim in the sea, 
Then on the sixth day, the culmination of the creating days, we hear God made the wildlife of the earth after their kind and herd animals after their kind and all crawling things of the soil after their kind. In the next verse, God plans to create humankind in the image of God and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the heavens, animals, all the earth, all crawling things that crawl about on the earth. Then God creates the humans as planned and tells the humans, bear fruit, be many, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the heavens, and all living things that crawl about upon the earth. Did you notice the difference? God announces the divine plan to give humans dominion, control, and mastery over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, animals of the earth, and crawling things. And then God tells the humans, you will have dominion over the fish of the sea, birds of the air, and all crawling things. The animal list changes. Before forming the humans, God said they'd have dominion over all the animals. Afterwards, from the list for anim of animals for human beings to dominate, God leaves off one, the animals of the earth, sometimes translated herd animals or cattle. Most curious. Because of all the things first named, fish, birds, cattle, wild animals, crawling things, the ones that human beings actually had the ability to dominate was the cattle. Humans could not live in the sea or in the air, nor could we keep up with the crawling things. And for the one animal over which humans exercised control, God held back the divine authority to dominate. Almost as though God realized that human beings might turn out to be reckless in the way they interpreted subdue and dominate. Notice what else God does not place within human domination, all the rest of creation, the stars of heaven, the great light ruling the day, the lesser light ruling the night, the waters, the wind over the waters, the dry land, the light and the darkness, the formation of life itself, all of that is left out. Also, God does not give humans authority to dominate other humans. We have done that for the most part in deadly disregard of God's will. We can't know just what was in the mind of God, but it does seem that God knew humans better than we know ourselves. Those words, subdue and dominate, have accounted for gross and ungodly abuses that human beings have made on this fragile planet. Mountains ripped apart in order to strip out coal, which then we burn, launching tons of foul dirt into the air. Hundreds of thousands of acres deforested, cutting out the trees that are as critical to the Earth's ecosystem as our lungs are to our bodies, as many as 270,000 species of animals and plants going extinct every year, mostly due to the mindless ways that we populate and develop the planet, the great ice formations of the Arctic that stabilize our weather systems and our climate are shrinking, glaciers inundating the planet as they melt, and our brutal treatment of the planet follows centuries of chauvinistic brutality by human against human. A simplistic and self-serving interpretation of the authority to subdue and dominate has led people of the book to perform near extermination of indigenous people. As a species, we've proved ourselves entirely too good at subduing and dominating. For Christians, there's no excuse. Perhaps we started, we, perhaps we stopped reading the Bible too early before all of God's teachings about the responsible and respectful and reverent use of our abilities. People who claim the faith of Christ Jesus have even embraced the Sermon on the Mount with their lips, with our lips, while constructing a society of such hostility for persons of color 
that our black and brown neighbors rightly question whether our laws and institutions can ever be purged of the hellish racism that infects them. It was not a rogue cop who killed George Floyd on May 25th. It was a long established pattern of decisions based on the conviction that black and brown persons are to be regarded as other and feared. It was not an anomaly that on May 13th, Breonna Taylor was shot dead in her bed, in her home, in the middle of the night. It happened because institutions of our society have assigned the deadly power of domination with minimal consequence for those who abuse it. It was not a couple of lone racist actors who gunned down Ahmaud Arbery as he jogged through Atlanta streets on February 23rd. It was a tradition of white supremacist vigilantism that is older than our nation. Our racism causes, our racism blinds us to the image of God in non-white persons. Instead of, instead the whiteness in us sees mostly what we fear. There are plenty of ways of responding to these atrocities. One essential way for us who are baptized into God's new vision of heaven and earth is to look to the Bible, not as a prop for a photo shoot, nor as an adornment for our bookshelf, but as the living word of God that reveals its radical message of love and justice when we do the work of learning that word, studying its richness and complexity and nuance, finding that God's word has the power to challenge us and to change us. We respond by listening for God's prophetic voice spoken through the experience of our black and brown neighbors who have yet to experience a country that is actually free for them. We respond by acknowledging that we have benefited from ungodly domination of God's creation, and we have benefited from ungodly devilish denigration of persons of color. We respond by naming the pandemic of white supremacy for which no vaccine exists, but healing may come when we are willing to relearn our history and dismantle the accumulation of unjust power. For sure, we respond at the ballot box also. And we respond by joining those who peaceably assemble to declare the murder and demeaning of my neighbors is an offense to the God in whose image they and we are made. As another preacher said, the world is too dangerous for anything but truth and too small for anything but love. We live with mutual respect when our lives are grounded in reverence. That's why we gather here on a Sunday morning to learn and relearn the reverence that will save our lives, that will save the lives of our neighbors and the life of God's world. If the simple, simplistic message of God to humans is dominate, the fullness of that message is equally clear to those who look into the living word. God sends one prophet after prophet and one teacher after another to give us instructions in restraining our capacity for harm and deepening our capacity for reverence and respect. God sends prophet after prophet, teacher after teacher, to show how to put to use our God-given abilities for godly purposes, the cause of wholeness, harmony, justice, and joy for every human, for all God's creatures, for creation. So for God's sake, and for the sake of all the generations that will yet be born into this beautiful, broken, bruised, and holy planet, Learn reverence, reverence for the light, reverence for the darkness, reverence for the waters, reverence for the sky, reverence for growing things, reverence for flying things, swimming things, running things, crawling things, reverence for bodies made in God's image in a great beauty of black and brown and olive and pale flesh 
reverence for everything that breathes and reverence for everything that supports life. Learn reverence. And in case this is the first sermon you've heard and in case it is the last, practice reverence cry for justice, march for a transformed society, love your neighbor and bring joy to the heart of God. May it be so. Let us pray. For George, Brianna, Ahmad, and slain neighbors beyond counting, May they rest in power. For those who grieve, may the Spirit give endurance in mourning. For those who do not see the image of God in each person, may God cleanse every mind and give eyes to see. For those who cry out with a prophet's cry, May God speak through them, inspiring a transformation of our hearts and of our nation and of our world. O oh, Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. Melt us, mold us, fill us, use us. Spirit of the living God, fall afresh on us. All that we pray, all that we ask for the healing of God's world, we ask in Jesus' name, and together let us pray the prayer that he taught his friends. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In our offering, though we are not in a place where we can pass the hat or the box among one another, I hope that you will join me in continuing to support financially the mission and ministries of our church community, striving to be the beloved community that Jesus has laid out for us and invites us to rebuild in every generation. There's a, uh, you make contribute to our mission and ministries by sending a check to the church or by using the, uh, the church website to contribute online. However you do it, know that when you do this, it is not a solitary act, but one in company with brothers and sisters of this community, uh, striving to live more deeply in God's reverence and in the love of Christ. The first words of the Bible are about God's own generosity. God gave us the gifts of a wondrous growing creation, our home, the good green earth and the animals that live here with us. On this summer morning, we worship to thank God and to offer our gift so that the ministry of this church will continue to grow and be a blessing to the world. Let us gather our gifts with grateful praise and offer them to God's purposes.
Please pray with me. God, we make offerings in your name that they may be a part of your creative, liberating rule in our world. With them, we offer our intentions and actions today and in the days ahead that by your grace, we may be part of your answer to the hopes and needs of all creatures that dwell in sea, sky, and earth. Amen. Please join me in the responsive approach to our shared communion meal. In the beginning, the spirit brooded time into being so that God could give form to the world. At the incarnation, the spirit breathed God's time into being so that the world could receive the living word. Through Pentecost, the Spirit brought transformed time into being so that the word of life could be everywhere encountered. Entering these gifts of bread and cup, the Spirit blesses this time being so this encounter with Spirit can comfort, challenge, and transform us. Creator God, your spirit brings us many different gifts. Forgive us when we have coveted only the spectacular ones. Your spirit speaks to us through many different voices. Forgive us when we have cut off the disconcerting ones. Your spirit offers us many different insights. Forgive us when we have considered only the comfortable ones. Your spirit invites us into many different moments of possibility. Forgive us when we have closed down the costly ones. Spirit of the living God, beyond time and yet here with us now, give us the wisdom to receive and treasure all your gifts, the discernment to hear and respond to your voice, the understanding to see and follow your patterns, and the courage to recognize and seize your moments. So may we grow in knowledge of Christ's realm, deepen in dependence on its grace, and love in accordance with its measures. Amen. When Jesus met at a table as he did so often with his disciples and with friends and with strangers, he was declaring that God's love knows no bounds and wherever God is feeding, all people are welcome. 
You do not need to be a member of our church to participate in this sacrament of communion. You do not need to be a baptized Christian. All that is necessary is that you have an inkling that God has nurture, nourishment for you. It is our hunger that makes us welcome everywhere where Jesus is host. And at this table, we remember how it was on that last Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples that he took the Passover loaf, thanked God for it, and broke it, saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this remembering me. And in the same way, at the end of the meal, he took the Passover cup, thanked God, and said, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink this, do it remembering me. Remembering Jesus and the gifts that he brought, we join with all Christians in declaring our undying praise. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. As we share these gifts of grace, may the Holy Spirit take and transform them so we know their comfort and their challenge and find ourselves and our time transformed by heaven itself. Take and eat the body of Christ broken for you. Take and drink the cup of the new covenant poured out for you. And please join me in praying responsively. Holy Spirit, you who birthed creation and enabled incarnation, continue to form and nurture us as we stumble toward maturity. Spirit, you who led Jesus into the wilderness, stir us out of ease and safety as we follow the way of Christ. Spirit, you who transformed the disciples, grace us and gift us for the task of building God's realm. Spirit, you whom Jesus bequeathed to all who follow the way of shalom, continue to comfort and discomfort us until justice prevails, peace reigns, and love directs all.
And now friends receive this benediction. May God bless you and watch over you. May the radiance of God shine upon you and within you and among you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and grant you wholeness, harmony, justice, joy, shalom, now and evermore. Our worship concludes. Our service continues. Go keep learning reverence. Keep living and calling for an ever deeper respect that the realm of Jesus may be seen among us. Amen. Thank you.